Welcome back to Oak Haven. It's been over a month since we did a, just a general walk through the woods. Uh, that was in the springtime, and this is more summer, so we'll hit more summer things. Um, wanted to share a little bit about what we've been doing. This last week or so, uh, what we've been treating here is uh, Japanese stilt grass, which is a very invasive uh, non-native uh, grass that's from Asia, brought over to this country uh, as packing material because when it dries it gets uh, kind of fluffy, it's like straw, so they would use it for packing uh, porcelain uh, shipping to this country and then as people would throw out the packing material it would it would take over. So uh, we have a little bit of it on our property. Um, not a lot. It seems to be in patches, uh, so we wanted to share that. We do have a video specifically on stilt grass and how we're treating it, um, if you're really interested in it. So this is stilt grass. Stilt grass has a very distinctive look to it, because unlike a lot of grasses, uh, stilt grass is not, does not have parallel sides. It's kind of oval-shaped leaves, and up the middle of each leaf is this shiny stripe, which looks like a silver stripe or a white stripe. Um, it's actually just uh, just shiny from the way it comes out of the sheath. But uh, it tapers at both ends, and it's an annual, so it pulls out of the, the ground very easily. We could theoretically just pull this out of the ground. Because it's an annual, that would, that would stop it from producing seeds, and once we got the seed bank uh, diminished, we would get rid of it. Unfortunately, we've got 60 acres. There's a lot of stilt grass patches. Uh, it's just not practical for us to pull everything out. So what we do is uh, we spray it with an herbicide. It's actually a grass-specific herbicide, a claim extra, that, uh, that works pretty well. So uh, we'll do that, and then areas that we miss, if there's a few plants that come up, we can just pull those up individually. So we will show you a little bit more about what, what a whole infestation of, of stilt grass looks like. It does get very invasive and, and chokes out a lot of other things. So let's talk about some other things that are, are here. We're going to walk along up here. We were talking about um, nettles. We've got several nettles growing on the property. We have wood nettle, which is a very desirable woodland plant. grows in the shade along creek bottoms. There are stinging nettles. We don't have stinging nettles on our property. That's a very popular nettle that's uh, foraged for food. Uh, you can also eat wood nettle also. Uh, we don't have a lot of wood nettles or stinging nettles. Stinging nettles are a non-native invasive plant, so we would not necessarily encourage that on the property. This here, though, is what they call false nettle, Bomeria cylindrica, and you can see that I mean, I'm touching it for one thing, so it's a nettle, but it doesn't have stinging hairs, it doesn't have the little little trichomes on it that, uh, that, uh, that, that sting you. Um, cylindrica, because the flowering stalks are in cylinders, so you can see, here, let's go over to this one over here. The flowering stalks come out in parallel-sided, looks like cylinders, looks like a little tube of flowers coming up. So false nettle is the larval food source for a number of native butterflies, the red-spotted purple, the comma, and the question mark. I'll put in some pictures of those. Uh, the red-spotted purple is interesting to me because uh, I don't know where they came up with the name because a red spotted purple is blue with orange spots. So the, the comma and the question mark are named because on the side of the under, uh, on the underside of the wing you can actually see there's a little comma or there's a little, looks like a comma with a dot on it, their, their question mark. So it's hard to get close to the, the butterfly to see those things, um, but they are at least uh, descriptive. So another nettle that I'd like to talk about along here is clearweed, which is in the nettle family. It's also a nettle that doesn't have any stinging hairs on it. The, if we look over here, I'm going to actually pick this. Clearweed is a pretty weedy plant, so I don't have any problem with picking it up. It's an annual, an annual weed. It has a leaf that's very similar to the other nettles that uh, serrated leaf. It, it is, has generally a shinier leaf, I feel like. And then the uh, veins are kind of depressed a little bit. But then the stem 
is almost translucent. It has kind of a glossy look to it. So that's clearweed. And then it has flowers that appear in the axils of the, the leaves. The leaves are opposite here, you can see. So clearweed, according to Wikipedia, is an edible plant. So I try clearweed, and I think, okay, it has a little bit of a citrusy flavor. The texture is awful. <laughs> it doesn't taste all that great. I'm not sure why they would say that it was edible. So I looked into it. Nice thing about Wikipedia is that uh, hopefully whoever wrote the, the text will source it into references. So I looked at the reference. They referenced another website that talked about clearweed. It was actually about um, uh, stinging nettle. The whole site was on stinging nettle. But they did mention clearweed, and they mentioned it that it was non-toxic and unpalatable. Non-toxic and unpalatable doesn't equate to edible to me, but uh, whoever wrote the Wikipedia article saw that as edible. Um, so be careful with your sources when you're looking for uh, finding edible things and, and looking for things to forage. A very prominent plant in the woods right around this time that's kind of unique is uh, leaf cup. Generally it's taller than this. Um, but it, it can be, you know, five feet tall. Interesting plant. It's got this dissected leaf that just doesn't look like anything else as far as I'm concerned. I always think that the, the, uh, the leaf of leaf cup looks like it was something that was cut out of construction paper by a grade school student uh, trying to do something for a project. The flowers on leaf cup, this is small flowered leaf cup or white leaf cup, also look like they're not very effectively done. So maybe it's that same grade school student is, is drawing flowers also, because the, the petals come out kind of uneven and it, uh, it, it looks just like kind of an awkward plant. Um, very hairy stem. So that's small flowered white or white flowered leaf cup. It's also called uh, bear leaf. I guess that's supposed to look like a bear paw. But like, like any uh, common names, you know, it only takes you so far. Um, I think leaf cup is a better name for that. And that obviously refers to the fact that the around the base of the leaf here, there's a cup of little, a little leaflet that forms a cup down there. A walk in the woods in the summer doesn't have a lot of flowers. You have to realize that the canopy is much heavier. It's not very productive for plants to produce a lot of flowers uh, in the forest floor. So a lot, the forest floor is actually starting to thin out. But there are some things that take advantage of that. Uh, the fact that there's the bugs are around and can pollinate uh, plants in the summer also. So this is tall bell flower. I don't think it looks particularly like a bell, um, but it's kind of a, it's a very pretty blue. It has this style and stigma that loop around and this uh, uh, kind of a hook-shaped pattern. That's tall bellflower. So we're going to walk down the driveway. We're going to see a couple more plants that are in bloom. Both of them are in the mint family. Come on, Timber, come. So here we have hairy wood mint. Again, a tall, pretty plant. Has this collection of flowers here, mint flowers. Very aromatic. Mm smells great. That's characteristic of mints. You can tell mints because most mints have square stems. If you can see this square stem, it's hard to see through all the, the hairs on this hairy mint. And then they tend to be aromatic. They also have uh, pretty unique uh, flowers. So it's hairy wood mint. We're going to walk down and find another mint here. As we're walking down to this other mint, I wanted to point out, if you look over the forest floor here, you see a lot of downed wood. A lot of it is cut honeysuckle. We've cut all the honeysuckle out of this huge area. Most of our 60 acres, we've, we've trimmed the honeysuckle on it. So this looks a lot different than it did a few years ago. Uh, we've been managing this for over 20 years, so we've been cutting smaller and, or small areas during that whole time 
within the last six or seven years, we've been making a concerted effort to, to clear areas completely. So this is American Germander, which is another mint. If you can see it, it also has a square stem, kind of a hairy stem, opposite leaves. And then these purple flower clusters. The, the cluster does not make it a mint, necessarily. The individual flowers uh, look very mint-like, though. So that's American Germander. So thanks for walking with us today. We appreciate you uh, taking the time to watch it. Um, if you like what you see, obviously hitting the like button helps us out. Subscribe if you want to uh, find out more about what we've been doing. So thanks for watching.